and gentlemen, the Honorable Mike Johnson, Speaker of the United States House of Representatives. Good morning, everyone. Um, it is a true honor to have you with us here in the People's House. And as the Speaker of the House, it is my pleasure to welcome you here as we honor one of America's greatest citizens and enduring heroes. Our, our capital, as you know, is filled with monuments to our history. They teach us about where we were and where we are and where we are going as a nation. And this, the statue of the oldest man in the capital is, is John Winthrop. He was an English Puritan lawyer and one of the leading founders of the Massachusetts Bay Colony in 1630. He symbolizes how our country began, marked by the belief, as he said in his own words, that with God's help, we could be a shining city upon a hill for the people. Of course, making the reference from scripture. Our newest statue is of a man who shared that same vision and who believed that same gospel, a man who looked back at where we were and who prayed and served endlessly for what we could become again, that shining city upon a hill. I want you to know that this, is a, uh, this truly is an historic moment. There are only four people in the history of our country who have received the three highest honors here. Those three honors are a congressional gold medal, having lied in state upon their passing, and having a, a statue here in the Capitol to be honored. Two of them were presidents, uh, Presidents Ford and Reagan, and one is Rosa Parks. And the other, as of today, will be Reverend Billy Graham. I've done a few of these ceremonial um, events now. Uh, we've, we've had a couple of statues come in since I've been Speaker of the House. I don't ever get nervous for public speaking, but I am nervous today. Can I be honest with you? <laughs> because Billy Graham is such a towering figure in my life, and as he is in all of our lives, and, and such a singular figure, and the, the leading ambassador for the kingdom of our lifetimes, and, and it just means so much to us. But I want, you, I want you to know, it's always a long journey to get a, a statue here in the Capitol, but we have a lot of thanks to give out today. Many people who helped to bring this day about and make this possible. Billy Graham finally takes his rightful place on these hallowed grounds of American democracy. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the presentation of the colors by the United States Army Color Guard from the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, the performance of our national anthem by the United States Army Band Pershing's Own Brass Quintet, and the retiring of the colors. What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glow bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave.
ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the invocation delivered by Dr. Barry C. Black, Chaplain of the United States Senate. Let us pray. Spirit of holiness, before whom none can stand in his or her own righteousness. Come into this statue dedication ceremony and dwell within our hearts. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to honor the life and legacy of your servant, the Reverend William Franklin Billy Graham Jr. by placing his statue in the United States Capitol building. We praise you for his life, which was like the light of morning at sunrise on a cloudless day, and like the brightness after rain that brings the grass from the earth. Lord, we celebrate his laudable example of blameless living, of obedience to your commands, and of telling your good news about salvation around the world. Inspired by his great and sacrificial life, may we emulate his commitments by refusing to deviate from integrity, living above reproach, and striving to transform dark yesterdays into bright tomorrows. In all of our tomorrows, almighty oh God, keep our eyes from tears, our feet from stumbling, and our hearts from despair. We pray in the name of the one Dr. Billy Graham passionately loved and served, Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen and amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Mike Johnson, Speaker of the United States House of Representatives. Well, uh, one of the good things about these ceremonies is we don't, um, we don't belabor the point. We're going right, to get right to the unveiling of the statue here at the beginning of the ceremony. I have the great privilege of doing that, but I'd like to invite some very important people to join me uh, for this exercise here beginning with Governor Cooper, uh, the members of the North Carolina Congressional Delegation, the Graham family, and it's a big family, uh, Dr. Bruce, Mr. Fagan, and the Statuary Hall Committee. If you would all join me here, and we'll do this together.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Roy Cooper, Governor of North Carolina. Well, Mr. Speaker, elected officials, distinguished guests, family and loved ones of the Reverend Billy Graham, I bring greetings from the state of North Carolina. It is such an honor to be with you on this special day. As I'm sure many of you here already know, it is always an honor every day to be from the great state of North Carolina. <laughs> Our state has given this nation its first flight, its first public university, its rich farmland, its best college basketball, <laughs> even its first declaration of freedom with the Halifax Resolves. Today, North Carolina gives the nation a symbol representing one of our dearest treasures, the Reverend Billy Graham, a man of faith a man of North Carolina. The Reverend Graham was known as a minister to millions, the pastor to presidents, a selfless man of God who lived out his calling by preaching and teaching across the world, always returning to his beloved home in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina for respite, then to return again to his worldwide ministry. I'll never forget as a child hearing him preach in Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh. He brought together people of different faiths and different races. Today we acknowledge that he is a better representation of our state than the statue it replaces, which brought memories of a painful history of racism. Not that Reverend Graham was perfect, he would have been the first to tell us that. Instead, he realized that he and all of us here today have feet of clay. We are imperfect. We have been found wanting. But he believed, as many of us do, that there is redemption. And he gave his life to delivering that message. The Reverend Billy Graham also recognized that the responsibility of public servants such as us, and especially that of the President of the United States, was so immense that whoever was in that office deserved a presumption of good faith, the power of prayer, the gift of his wisdom, friendship, and advice. He did not seek to bludgeon or deify any political candidate or party. Instead, he would use his magnetic, loving, and persuasive gifts to counsel and lift in prayer political leaders of both parties. He did not seek to attack other religions, and he treated all with dignity and respect. In fact, he once said, quote, racial prejudice anti-Semitism or hatred of anyone with different beliefs has no place in the human mind or heart. We've often strayed from that example, but as we stand together today as public officials, we can honor his legacy not just by unveiling this statue, but by being humble. Humble enough to know that our public service is not to honor ourselves, but to serve our country and strengthen our democracy. And humble enough to put aside personal aggrandizement, to do better for our country, not for personal gain. As we gaze upon North Carolina's newest statue here in the Capitol, let us reflect on the realization that the Reverend Billy Graham's work to share counsel and guidance, to seek grace and peace, and live a life of faith, service, and humility is needed now more than ever. 
the work to bring people together for a higher calling. That work is unfinished, and that work must continue. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Ted Budd, United States Senator from North Carolina. Well, good morning. It is absolutely my honor to be here. You know, this day is a decade in the making. And it would not have been possible without the teamwork of fellow members of the North Carolina delegation. So thank you. You know, I want to thank them for their commitment to honor one of North Carolina's favorite sons. The legacy of Reverend Billy Graham, it's based on a simple message. Creation, fall, redemption, and our ultimate hope set forth in Scripture. You know, he took this message of hope in Christ to more than 185 nations, to more than 200 million people in person and more than two billion people through radio and television broadcasts. Now I was one of those two billion who would watch him on TV as a young kid. Now when I was young I remember loving to watch Billy Graham and for two reasons. One, it was the good news of Jesus Christ winsomely presented and two, if he was on TV, my parents would let me stay up late. <laughs> you know, to this day, anytime I hear the hymn, just as I am, I want to get up and walk forward. You know, more people have heard the good news of Jesus from Billy Graham than any man in our history. And that incredible legacy, you know, it didn't start with him, because as with many things, it started in the prayers of prior generations, including his parents, his in-laws, and it was enriched by the love of his wonderful wife, Ruth. And this legacy continues on through his children, through his grandchildren. And for the North Carolinians here today, it's our great honor to have Billy Graham and his family call our state home. He was raised on a small farm in what's now grown into a big city. And he and Ruth, they could have lived anywhere in the world, but they chose to make North Carolina home. They raised their family there, and they put our state at the heart of a global ministry. So as we honor his memory in the U.S. Capitol today, let us never forget the Bible that he preached, the souls that were saved, and the lives that were transformed. Enough lives to affect the course of nations. So it's our hope that we as lawmakers, as we come and go, and as visitors pass by the statue here of Billy Graham, that we're reminded of his ministry and what he preached, so often emphasizing two verses in the Gospel of John etched on either side of this beautiful statue. The first, as we know, from the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16, for as, for as God loved the world, he gave his one and, only son, one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And in John 14, 6, when Jesus declares, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. His point was this, and I quoted in his words in his final crusade in 2005. He said, I have one message, that Jesus Christ came, he died on a cross, and he asked us to repent of our sins and to receive him by faith as Lord and Savior. And if we do, we have forgiveness of all our sins. Friends, God's grace is undeserved, but through Christ it is freely given, and it is by trusting in Christ's sacrifice that we are saved. If you've not made that decision for yourself, I hope, I pray that you will. For friends, it's by the power of Christ's spirit in a transformed life that we have the power to love one another and the power to make America and the world a better place. May God bless the life and the legacy of Reverend William Franklin Graham Jr. and may God forever bless the United States 
of America. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Tom Tillis, United States Senator from North Carolina. Thank you all, and welcome to our great capital. Mr. Speaker, I think you'd agree, you're hard pressed to uh, get consensus here on what color the sky is on a cloudless day. But I believe that we can all agree here and have great consensus that Billy Graham was a trailblazer. During the 1950s, in an era where leaders in the South openly embraced segregation, it was Billy Graham who spoke out against it. He insisted in his sermons that they be integrated. He shared his platform with black ministers, including one named Martin Luther King Jr. Reverend Graham was blessed with the gift that bridged differences and brought us all together. Ted, I remember vividly sitting down, there were two things that were a staple in my family, Walter Cronkite and Billy Graham. <laughs> Reverend Graham was blessed with the gift that, uh, that brings us all together, bridged the differences between us. You can remember it in the Crusades, we all came together. He united Americans. He lifted them up. He understood how God's word could change hearts and inspired us to live up to our highest ideals. I hope when members of Congress walk by his statue, they reflect on the standards of faith, ethics, and decency that he exemplified throughout his extraordinary life. I believe that his presence here in the Capitol can help us find opportunities to unite around what makes our nation great. There's no North Carolinian more deserving of this honor. I want to thank the many people who played a role in getting a statue here. I see one of those people, my friend, former colleague, Charlie Jeter in the audience. He led the charge to get the state law passed in 2015 that started this whole process. Chase Fagan, Charlotte artist, what a wonderful job you did with this statue. And I also have to thank the Graham family, Franklin, Ann, all of you. Thank you for sharing such a wonderful treasure with the rest of this world. Our nation is blessed to have Billy Graham as our nation's pastor. And it's North Carolina's honor to be able to call him our native son. Thank you all for being here today, and thank you for gracing this beautiful capital with Billy Graham. God bless you all. Ladies and gentlemen, the Reverend William Franklin Graham III, son of Reverend William Franklin, Billy Graham Jr., and President and CEO, Billy Graham Evangelistic Association and Samaritan's Purse. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Vice President Pence, members of the Senate, members of the House, Governor Cooper, distinguished guests, friends, and lots of family. My father would be a little uncomfortable with um, this, uh, this being here because he would want the focus to be on the one that he preached. It want the focus to be on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. <laughs> on the base, John 3.16, John 14.6 are inscribed, and of course, John 3.16 gives the gospel that God so loved this world that he sent his son on a rescue mission to save sinners. He didn't come to condemn, he came to save. 
And if we would confess our sins and repent and believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we can be saved. And this was his message he preached his entire life. He never, never got off track. And of course, Jesus said, I'm the way and the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. My father believed it. He believed the Bible cover to cover. He didn't understand it all, but he certainly believed it all, every word of it. Our family is honored um, that our earthly father will be here in this capital, pointing to future generations to our heavenly father and his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael W. Smith performing I Surrender All. Well, it's an honor to be here, and I can't help but reflect on the many times that we were able to minister together all across America for so many years. But I especially remember the last few years of his life on this earth, especially the last few months when I would set up my piano beside him in his wheelchair, and he wouldn't want to, he wouldn't want to hear friends. He wanted to hear some hymns is what he wanted to hear. And... Um, so I would play all of his hymns, his favorite hymns, and he would try to sing along as best as he could. But this is one that I remember probably uh, for the rest of my life that we had the treasure of experiencing together. And I think maybe, just maybe, that Billy would want this to be our theme song today and in the days ahead. to Jesus, all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Patrick McHenry, United States Representative from the 10th District of North Carolina. Please forgive me, I didn't organize the program. Um, had I organized the program, I would not follow Franklin Graham nor Michael W. Smith. Uh, so forgive me, um, this will pass quickly. Um, but one of the great moments, and I would say the greatest moment of my service in Congress was in 2012. Uh, redistricting had just occurred in North Carolina, which is traditional, it's seasonal. Um, and I was just getting to know new parts of my district when I got a call from the folks in Reverend Graham's office. Uh, who said that he would welcome the opportunity to meet his new congressman. And so, um, you see, my new district had, in, uh, had taken in a little town called, a little college town called Montreat in the Swannanoa Valley of Western North Carolina. Um, and it was in this small town in Western North Carolina that Reverend Graham and his beloved Ruth were married, made their home, raised a family. He was just as comfortable uh, chatting with locals at the Coach House restaurant in neighboring Black Mountain as he was on the world stage. And it was in that little train stop in Black Mountain that he would take the overnight train in the 1950s and the 1960s to come here to Washington. And that overnight train, he would get off the station right down the road and he would go meet with folks here in this capital. Both parties, he would go to the White House, and no matter the president, they wanted him as their counselor. No matter the party, they wanted him as their counselor. And to be able to speak with Reverend Graham in the home that he and Ruth raised their amazing family, um, to pray with him, uh, to feel the warmth that so many had felt uh, broadly and one-on-one. -on -one. His experience that, and a memory that I will always, always treasure. So today, it is a true honor to be a part of the lasting tribute to America's pastor, who counseled 13 presidents, who personally evangelized nearly 215 million people in 185 countries. A man who squarely was in the public eye, but who transcended politics. This humble servant of God who, raised, who was raised on his father's dairy farm in Charlotte. Uh, from those modest roots, he went on to be the finest North Carolinian. Without a doubt, the finest North Carolinian North Carolina has ever produced. And it is altogether fitting that he should take his place among the greatest Americans here in the Statuary Hall. Thanks so much. God bless. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Virginia Fox, United States Representative from the 5th District of North Carolina. So Patrick said he had a tough position in the program, so what about me? I have to follow him. Good morning, everyone, especially the members of the Graham family are with us, as well as people who have traveled all the way from our beloved mountains of North Carolina. Welcome. The statues in the United States Capitol, a building that I love and admire deeply, should represent the very best of America. That is why it is such a proud moment for me and North Carolinians to see Reverend Graham's statue take its place here. For many years, I advoc I've advocated for Reverend Graham to have a place within these hallowed halls and to know that millions of people who visit the Capitol every year will be able to look upon his statue, read those verses, and be encouraged. The North Carolina delegation, General Assembly, the design committee worked with expediency to bring this suggestion to fruition. Everyone involved in this process understood Reverend Graham's impact within our country and across the world. He deserves to be recognized in a very tangible way here in the Capitol. 
During his lifetime, he counseled foreign dignitaries, numerous presidents, members of the royal family, and many other significant public figures. However, his life's work was dedicated to the millions of people around the world who found Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior through his preaching, as well as to being patriarch of a family that is continuing his work. He once described being a Christian as, quote, more than just an instantaneous conversion. It is a daily process whereby you grow to be more and more like Christ. How well we here in Congress understand what a challenge that is. And others have alluded to it. But seeing this statue here every day will encourage us to strive to be more like Reverend Graham and like Christ. We're blessed that the Lord allowed him to be with us for 99 years. With this statue, his memory and example will live on as long as our country exists. It's an honor to be here on this momentous day. May God continue to bless all of you and our great country. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Mike Johnson, Speaker of the United States House of Representatives. What, what, a, uh, what an exciting day this has been, and, and what, a, what a fitting ceremony. Um, you've heard emotion, you've heard authenticity, you've heard humility, um, and, and he embodied that for so much of us. He was the model in so many ways. We, we want to thank you all again for being here. I have a couple of thoughts I want to share. Um, just, just briefly, first of all, of course, Scripture reminds us always to give honor where honor is due, and we give special thanks to the North Carolina State uh, Statue Committee, uh, Governor Cooper, of course, the North Carolina delegation. It's an awesome group. You guys have sent an awesome group to Congress. Um, and, and they're ably led, of course, by the delegation dean, uh, Ms. Virginia Fox, and, and she's amazing. And of course, the Billy Graham Evangelical Association, which has a massive, untold impact an immeasurable impact around the world. And thank you for going through this lengthy process and making today possible. I've also, I know here with us, there are lots of dignitaries and many of my personal heroes. Uh, Senator and Secretary Elizabeth Dole from North Carolina is with us. And, uh, um, <laughs> another person who I know is, was personally impacted by Billy Graham, Vice President Mike Pence. And he was mentioned earlier just briefly, but, but uh, Chaz Fagan is the sculptor of this magnificent statue. And um, I, I mentioned earlier, there's only four Americans who have achieved the three highest honors here. One of the other men that achieved that great honor I mentioned earlier was, was President Ronald Reagan. And he's another of my personal heroes. He's, uh, what you may not know is Mr. Fagan also created that statue. And that's pretty awesome. Um, it's positioned prominently there in the rotunda. Um, I actually love this placement. I'm not sure if you all realize the significance of this, but as you know, this is the main corridor through the, through, through the, through the Congress and through the, the Capitol, and, and literally millions of people will walk by and read John 14, 6 right there, and then they'll walk around the other side and see John 3, 16, and they're going to see him pointing right there to the open book. And so that'll be a great conversation piece for us as we give tours of uh, the Capitol late night and bring all of our friends and the visitors and school kids, and university students. Um, I mean, I think it's providential that it's right here. I'm just saying, I think it's the perfect placement. <clears throat> and while I stand before you as the Speaker of the House, I'm, I'm more importantly here today as so many of us are as, as a believer, as a Christian, as a follower of Christ, and one who has been deeply impacted <clears throat> by the ministry of the Reverend Billy Graham. It was in 1951 that Reverend Graham came to my hometown of Shreveport, Louisiana for one of his early crusades. He came at the invitation of uh, Dr. M. E. Dodd, and Reverend Graham started preaching at our municipal auditorium. It's a pretty famous place. It's where Elvis, you know the phrase, Elvis has left the building? Yeah. Right there, municipal auditorium. It's a very famous place. <laughs> uh, but, but the problem was that um, 
Reverend Graham was too popular and the message was, uh, was too impactful and the crowds were so large they had to move to the football field at our state fairgrounds in Shreveport. And those meetings in Shreveport became Reverend Graham's very first outdoor crusades. Yes, you're right. Right there in Shreveport, that was the end. That's right. I, at least that's what we claim. I think it's true. I think, I think it's true. And over the course of three weeks, he preached to approximately 200,000 people, which is greater than the population of the whole northwest corner of the state. So they came in from all over the place. And, and, and one of the men who was present at those meetings seven decades ago led my own father to Christ. And other people who were present at those meetings were my childhood pastors and my Sunday school teachers, who all had a massive influence, of course, upon me. And the gospel they heard of, of Jesus Christ's death and resurrection is the gospel that they preached to me and, and my siblings and all, everybody in my sphere of influence. And that's the message that's changed my life for eternity and which Reverend Graham knew would change every person's life. It's the good news of salvation and redemption and hope that you've heard articulated here today, that our Creator loved us so much, every one of us, that He gave His only Son so that every single person who believes in Him can have that same gift of eternal life. And even as he preached to hundreds of millions and ministered to and walked with presidents and kings, <clears throat> what we love about Billy Graham is that he exemplified Christ's humility, as you've heard today. He was buried, many people don't remember, in a plywood casket that was fashioned by prisoners at Angola in Louisiana. Reverend Graham humbled himself to care for the poor and, and prisoners, the forgotten, the lost, and least of these, exactly what the scripture tells us to do. <clears throat> and um, because he believed, he really did believe that. He believed that even the poorest sinner could be a co-heir with Christ for eternity. And that's what motivated him. <clears throat> and, and those men who made his casket had come to believe that message too. And they believed it through the influence of Billy Graham and the Graham family. And because Reverend Graham never pursued earthly riches, he, he, as was said, he'd probably be uncomfortable with this today. He, he, this great honor with such a great statue, but that humility is exactly why God exalted him and chose him and, and, and raised his platform to, to such great heights. Billy Graham was known as America's pastor, as was noted, and, and, and he had a, a personal relationship with and a unique influence upon every president since Harry Truman. And, and as his body laid here in the rotunda in February 2018 at Leiden State, throngs of people, of course, came through to pay their last respects. and all the members of Congress and everybody and dignitaries from all around and tributes poured in. And they included uh, all of the living former presidents. Here's a quick sample of some of the things they said. Donald Trump said, quote, Billy's acceptance of Jesus Christ around his 17th birthday not only changed his life, it changed our country and the world. He was one of the towering figures of the last 100 years, an American hero whose life and leadership truly earned him the title God's ambassador. Um, Barack Obama tweeted this, Billy Graham was a humble servant who prayed for so many and who, with wisdom and grace, gave hope and guidance to generations. Uh, George W. Bush said, those of us who are blessed to know Billy Graham benefited from his deep convictions and personal example, his wisdom and humility, his grace and purity of heart. We knew that his life was a gift from the Almighty. And I rejoice that he is now in the company of God, whom he loved so much and served so well. Bill Clinton, he said, Billy Graham was one of the most important religious leaders in American history. His powerful words and the conviction they carried touched countless hearts and minds. George H.W. Bush, he, they, were, they were very close. He said, his faith in Christ and his totally honest evangelical spirit inspired people across the country and around the world. I think Billy touched the hearts of not only Christians, but people of all faiths because he was such a good man. And I was privileged to have him as a personal friend. One more, Jimmy Carter. He said, the Reverend Billy Graham tirelessly spread the message of fellowship and hope and shaped the lives of tens of millions of people worldwide. Broad-minded, forgiving, and humble in his treatment of others, he exemplified the life of Jesus Christ by constantly reaching out for opportunities to serve. What, what a model for us. What a story to tell as we bring school, school kids through and university students and, and constituents We'll stop right here. I'll be stopping right here every time to tell some of these stories. At the foundation of the, of the statue, as you mentioned, are these two verses. And 
Those will be shared broadly now. And in, in his left hand, just a couple of things I'll note and I'll close. He, op he holds an open Bible, as, as you can see. And with an open right hand, and he's, he's inviting all those to view and reflect upon the Word of God. And his Bible is open specifically. You'd have to climb on a ladder to see it, but it's uh, Galatians 6, verse 14. Later, I'll climb up and take a picture and send it to you all, okay? But it's there. But I, I mentioned earlier I'm a little nervous, and one of the reasons I'm nervous is they handed me Billy Graham's study Bible. I, I mean, it's, it's priceless, right? I, I'm about to shake just holding it right now. It's got his notes inside. I know, I know. <laughs> I need Secret Service to come and hand it off to him. So, so but, but, but it's opened, as I said, to Galatians 6.14. Let me tell you what, it, what that verse is. Many of you know it by heart. But he has it underlined in red. I mean, it's, but God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. That's a, that's a fitting verse to be open to, and it's, as you can see, the page is, is well marked. Um, it's pretty awesome. This is the verse that Reverend Graham put on the banner of his life and in his final years, and, and to close, using one of his own marked up Bibles, that's, that's what we chose to share with you. We, we, wanna, we wanna thank you all uh, for coming here today, for being a part of this very special ceremony. It was a long time coming, as we said, and, and, and all of you who helped truly, truly to make this day possible. It's a day for celebration, and so we invite you to stick around as long as you like and take photos, and as we all celebrate together the great legacy of the Reverend Billy Graham. Ladies and gentlemen, Please stand for the benediction delivered by the Reverend Dr. David P. Bruce, former executive assistant to William Franklin Billy Graham, Jr. What a marvelous day, and as we conclude our service, on behalf of the Graham family and the grateful citizens of the state of North Carolina, thanks to the congressional leadership for this marvelous honor. Mr. Graham simply wanted to be remembered as a preacher of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and so he shall always be. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank thee for this day of remembrance and honor, for this your servant, Billy Graham, and his ministry that encompassed the world. We're also grateful for this place in which Mr. Graham is being honored, a special and beautiful building with its majestic dome that reflects a beacon of freedom and democracy, dreams and possibilities, this, the United States of America. We pause to pray this day as you have commanded for those in authority over us, in governmental offices and state houses, in the judiciary system, for the military and first responders, and all who work to keep us safe and preside over the leadership of this country. And we pray for each leader that they would act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. We also pray this day with thankfulness for the life of William Franklin Graham, Jr. and the extraordinary ministry provided to him, the clear annunciation of good news, the way of salvation, preached from your Holy Bible, and all punctuated with that remarkable North Carolina accent so beloved by all who heard him preach. For his life and his times, his family, and the spiritual calling that he lived so faithfully, for this statue and its remembrance for generations to come of the message he preached and the Savior he reflected in life, heart, and word. Thank you, Lord, for Billy Graham a preacher of your gospel, a bearer of the good news to those who are lost. And as we conclude this event, as believers in this place, we pray that in the midst of a weary world with the scourge of sin and evil that seems so prevalent, we rejoice in the profound hope of the good news of the gospel and its power to change human hearts, just as Billy Graham preached through a life well-lived and a ministry completed in his day.
for this life and his message, we pray in the strong, wonderful, and beautiful name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Thank you for attending and enjoy the rest of your day.